everybody if you're watching this video please be sure to like and subscribe um i just got done working out so excuse well <laughs> um but i also just got finished um watching queen's court um the finale because like i told you i wasn't gonna watch those episodes in the shade room and I already told us you know what, what's gonna happen um so this is still a review for season one episode 10 court adjourns okay so nivia begins the episode at the elimination dinner and she's crying and saying to mac that he deserves real love then she says so you will not be going home tonight and he was like come on man and seriously that would have stressed me out too um you can see ty over there he was looking bothered ty and mac are still around um so nivia is like the only one with two men left the rest of them evelyn and tamar have narrowed it down to one person um they but he was looking bothered ty and mac like I said, um, Nivia just said she needed more time to make a decision. So the ladies go to talk after the elimination dinner. Tamar is like, we are getting close, y'all. And they were talking about how stressed they are. Uh, yeah, as you get paid for this reality show, but okay. Evelyn's issue is that they live, her and LaVon live four hours away from each other. And she doesn't want the distance, which she really meant was four hours away on a plane. Okay. From Atlanta to LA. All right, she should have said that. Otherwise, it seems like you meant Charleston, South Carolina. But whatever. Um, so Tamar says that she will choose herself if she's not 100% sure and doesn't feel 100% safe. And I think that's something that a lot of women want to feel. It's just simply safe. There's so many things that can happen to us, um, especially black women. So I think that is the best way to go about it. And I appreciate that. And Tamar is saying that she would love no, she would hate to be Nivea <laughs> because she's so conflicted. Um, so meanwhile, the fellows are in the kitchen talking and they're relieved. Well, kind of like they're glad they're still in it, but still, um, Ty is telling Mac that he's just letting him know, like that he's going to go all in for Nivea. Like, I still feel like Ty is a good time when you go on a girl's trip out of the country. Um, but you don't date him seriously because he's a cheater and an opportunist and will do anything to be on TV. But that's just me. That's just my, you know, short of the long analysis that I have on time. Anyway, Evelyn and LaVon, they live in two different states. They both have kids that are school age and she's worried about how it will work. I wish their casting within the locale would have helped. But Evelyn, you probably should have considered that this reality show was being shot in Atlanta. And you live in L.A. And that's what makes me think that this is not really about a relationship. Okay, but that wouldn't be new for you. So Nivea was like, if she never met Ty, she would have chosen Mac without a second thought. But if she never met Mac, she would have chosen Ty without a second thought. And that is a rough space to be in. Um, she said she is conflicted. If she is not certain, she will not move. She said she's learned to trust herself in that way. And I, I get that. So Holly and Rodney meet the couples at, you know, the house or whatever. And Holly is still serving looks in her yellow business suit. Yes, ma'am. I love it. And the one last step slash test is the Holly and Rodney exam. Um, so they were going to ask them each each couple set. Um, I say that because the two guys um, ask them some questions that could help them decide whether or not the relationship will work. Um, Holly says smile because we come in peace. Um, so Levon and Evelyn are the first couple to sit down with Holly and Rodney. So they talk about the distance between. I don't know if it's my southern sensibilities but i feel so uncomfortable calling people that are like 20 years my senior by their first name i want to call them mr and mrs p just have it but y'all be like huh okay so anyway um so they talk about the distance between the two and lavon said initially my instinct was it wasn't going to work because she was in la evelyn points out this won't be her first long distance relationship and she says it didn't work out and she doesn't want to be responsible for uprooting both of their lives I was like, yeah, boo, you need to think about that, mama, uh, because your kid is eight and his is 14. His kid being uprooted so close to high school and that being a huge transition set uh, of time for a kid, especially as they prepare to go to college, that would be very disruptive. And him and his wife share a half custody. That means they're both involved. All right, um, Evelyn, you don't work and you have your son most of the time, 90% of the time, according to your own admission. Uh, like, baby girl, deal, figure it out. Anyway, I know she's still trying to be a star. Anyway, Holly and Rodney talk about um, how he was going to train with the Detroit Lions 
and going to training camp when they met and they had kind of established that they were going to be in a relationship. But she said, the, she said that was really hard, the distance. And they're 27 years into a marriage. And she's still talking about that time they were apart. I was like, y'all have had a really good relationship. If that's one of the hardest things you bring up. Um, I mean, granted, they're not telling us all their business. I'm not judging. I'm just making a point. Um, but she said, we both made a conscientious choice to make it work. And Rodney asked LaVon, how much did he know about Evelyn before he got here? And he says, well, I knew about her TV personality and some of her relationship past. Evelyn starts crying about how she has always wanted to be married. And even though she was married for a short period of time, she went into it with open heart. And we know, Evelyn, that you have always wanted to be married. It's obvious because you have multiple engagements. You were engaged to Antoine Walker for 10 years. Then you were engaged to Ocho Cinco, married 45 days. Then you were engaged to the Crawford guy that's the baseball player. Um, and now you're engaged again. <laughs> hey, ma'am. Um, so Holly tells her she deserves a healthy, safe love. And I thought that was really kind of Holly Robinson Pete because she's so classy. And it's no telling what Holly Robinson Pete really thinks. Okay, because she's classy. She doesn't let it out like that. And that's good. And I respect people like that. I aspire to be like you one day. Next is Tamar and JR. So Tamar says she's been thugging this thing out by herself. You know what Tamar talks. <laughs> so she didn't include the opinions of her friends and family. But Holly and Rodney are like, as far as she says, she said they're team Tamar. And um, Holly and Rodney ask him, is he ready to be in the spotlight? And Rodney asks Tamar, has she dealt with men who can't handle the spotlight? And she says, yes. Holly, Holly got down to the root of it, honey. And I was here for it. And that's what Rodney tried to warn us of. He was like, she's going to ask these questions. So Holly asked how he fathered two children in 2019. I said, yes, ma'am, get to the root. 2019, baby, two kids by two different people. And so he uh, talked about how it was a dark time and he went through a lot because he was kind of embarrassed by it, like in terms of his decisions. And I guess, yes, getting two women pregnant at one time demonstrates a level of irresponsibility. You're in your 40s, sir. And you're a practicing attorney. Anyway, um, so Tamar says she um, has had trouble having children. Um, but she always wanted a big family. And I remember her saying that on the Braxton's. I also remember her saying she didn't think she ever wanted kids on the Braxton's. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, we go back and forth. We go back and forth and life hands us what it has. And I do think there can be a blessing in that, that you may not have gotten a big family that you wanted the way you thought you were going to get it, but maybe coming into it. I think, nevertheless, and this is just my opinion, um, JR is a lawyer and he's good with words and what to say in public and how to articulate things well. Um, but I don't trust him. I don't. And his hair is given Django, Leonardo DiCaprio's character. And that's also a turn off for me. Anyway, next is Nivea and Mac. Okay. Cause we gonna get Nivea again, but Nivea and Mac. And I don't, I like Mac. I think he's a solid guy. He raised his two kids and they're now grown. He was like, because their mother had been unstable, whatever the case was. So, um, Nivea looked very nice in her spring pink. Um, they are talking about the potential of a blended family. And he says he's not trying to be a dad, um, but instead to be a bonus dad and be there to help and add value. Not trying to replace the father. And I thought that was a very good approach. Because I certainly, if I had a child, wouldn't feel comfortable with a stepmother just coming in and trying to take my role. And I, I like the fact that he respects that already. Um... And Holly asks he, if he's going to have trouble with her two baby's fathers who were very famous. And she said, men always say they can handle it, but they usually can't fax. Um, he was just like, if we have the same goal of the family and supporting each other, then I think we'll be fine. And I think he believed that. I actually do. So next is Nivea and Ty. I could be wrong now. <laughs> next is Nivea and Ty. So they say their energy is electric. Like people can tell. Like you can tell they have chemistry, sexually at least. Um, even if they didn't do it. Like you can just tell they're really attracted to each other. So Rodney asks, is there anything beyond the physical? And Holly starts talking about, once again, the same distance story and like, how is it going to work? Um, because he lives in Texas and she lives in Atlanta. And Nivea has four kids and he has six kids. I was like, damn. And he says that between them, they have 10 kids, but he had one of the best examples in the world and he had a great stepdad growing up. Um, so he feels like he can play that role. And I get it, but 10 kids is a lot, and that's a lot of attention to give. Um, I don't know how old Nivea's kids are. 
But I can guarantee you Ty six, all those kids aren't grown. I can guarantee that. All right. Um, Max kids are grown and I think it would be easier for him to come in because his kids would not be as dependent on him in the way that younger kids would be. That would allow him to be more of a support to Nivea. That's just my opinion. So then Rodney and Holly meet with um, the three women alone after they had the, the check-ins. And just want to see how they would feel. Evelyn said if she saw LeVon in the airport, she would have just kept walking. She said he's different from any man she has ever dated. And this has been a learning curve for her to learn how to, you know, look at men differently. Tamar starts crying and says she's scared to get back out there. And Nivea, you know, tries to make her feel better. Was it me? Or did, did you see in that last episode, Evelyn just kind of looked at her crying and she just rolled her, I mean, like, just turned her head like, I don't care. And I was like, that's the Evelyn that we don't like. That's the Evelyn we know, okay? You can't do enough shows to convince us, convince me at least, that you are a changed person. Anyway, um, so Holly and Rodney say they have officially reached the end of the process. And can I just say again how glad I am? Uh, they are hosting this show, that they hosted it. They are just such a model couple. And I don't mean that like I, I see them like, I don't believe in that couple goal shit. I just think they exude so much class from the way they act to the way they dress to the way they demonstrate respect for one another. And it doesn't feel like a performance. It feels genuine. And that's so rare that you get that on TV. It doesn't feel like a, it just feels natural. And I, I love that. I just love that about them. So there is no elimination dinner in this process because Holly and Robinson, uh, Holly Robinson P and Rodney P, they didn't check the deuces going back to, yeah, I guess, L.A. Um, Holly and Rodney say this is it for them and say y'all need, y'all don't really need us at this point. Then Nivea tells them thank you. She's talking to Evelyn and Tamar for being sisters and that they showed her she could work on trusting um, not just men in romantic relationships, but that she could work on trusting people because they were so supportive of her and she realized that she does have a larger trust issue. Um, because she doesn't let anybody do anything for her. And I think a lot, a lot of black women in particular are like that. Um, we don't know how to tell people what we need. Or when we have told people what we need, they've disappointed us. And so we shut down. And so I just, I think it's good that she's working on that. And recognize that and said that verbally. Because even a lot of us are embarrassed to even say that. Because it, it demonstrates a level of vulnerability and weakness that sometimes people use against you. Um, so LeVon says he wasn't sure at first that him and Evelyn would work because they're so different. Uh, they're at the table. This is like that final set. I'm sorry. So I should have described it. They, they have like this little dinner space or whatever. Um, LeVon says he wasn't sure at first about him and Evelyn because they were so different. LeVon, personally, I think you could do a lot better. I think you could do much better, bruh. I really think you could. Um, they get to this dinner table with a tablecloth and a bottle of champagne. I'm not even sure it's sitting on ice and no food. So it is clearly just a scene. They're dressed up like they're going to attend somebody else's wedding. You know, the kind of dress that you wear to, to a wedding, but not because you're the bride or bridesmaid, but just because you're going, <laughs> they look like they were guests at a wedding. Um, but not at a wedding. Like it was just weird. Um, so anyway, Evelyn starts crying. And talking about how afraid she is because they're starting off in a public relationship, which he isn't used to. And he was like, no, I'm not. And there are so many what ifs. Facts. Okay. Um, she starts talking about she hasn't been lucky in love. And she has been settling because of what she thought her life should look like. And men bought her things but didn't take care of her heart. And I'm like, yes, Evelyn, you have. You were also going after athletes specifically who were grossing large amounts of money. So, you know, is it bad luck or was it miscalculations and mistakes, but that were purposeful miscalculations? You didn't realize it was miscalculations until later, but you were still going after those things. Anyway, so after all that, after she goes through all that, then she asks him to be her king. He, of course, agrees. Evelyn says she has officially found her king. LaVon says that goal, marriage is his goal. Um, they're now engaged, but we've also seen this movie before. As I mentioned, we've seen Evelyn publicly engaged several times. We met her as an ex-fiance on Basketball Wives. So Nivea meets with Matt, because you remember she got two men. <laughs> oh, Nivea, I love you. 
Oh my lamb. I gotta start using that. So she still say says they don't have a lot of passion. Um, but this has helped her come to understand more about him and about the way he is and what may look like passion and love in a different context is not the same. So she meets with Mac and her gal. Nivea tells him she's still a work in progress. And he said something to her I thought was really sweet. And he said that his great grandmother was very warm and loving. And she reminded him of her. And he said she lights up her room when she walks in. And when he met her, it reminded him of someone who really loved him. And that was sweet, I thought. Like somebody just saying, oh, you remind me of my great grandmother. That might be like, what are you trying to say? But when he said, you reminded me of somebody who loved me. I thought that was so thoughtful. And Nivea tells Max she respects him too much to play. And she's sorry, but he's not her king. And that she looks forward to being friends with him. And she's crying. Um, and I don't think they'll be able to be friends because I think he really likes her. Um, he said he was sad, but his only regret was that he didn't showcase how much he wanted her. And I think that's a very mature reaction. And I'm saying that to compare to the following. So then Nivea goes to meet up with Ty. All right, Ty tries to turn on the charm. He said... She made him look at himself, and he then said, it's like the old saying, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> baby, baby, Negro, seriously. Quote and Forrest Gump, stop. Okay, so Nivea said she was shocked that Ty was drawn to her, and that made me stop for a second and think, maybe she doesn't think as highly of herself. Like, maybe she thinks those kind of men aren't attracted to her. And that kind of hurt me to hear her say that. But, I mean, it, it was, I mean, I'm sure her truth. Um, did y'all notice how fake all of their earrings were? Uh, Evelyn Tamar and, you know, they probably have some, like, cast outfits or some, something. But how fake Nivea's were in particular because she had, like, those teardrop earrings with those, like, fake diamonds. You could tell they were, like, rhinestones. But then when they turned on the back, it was just, like, fake gold. <laughs> And I was like, oh, my lamb, please don't do that again. Okay, camera, people, let her know that. Then she tells Ty she learned to trust herself. And that's something she's worked on, and she is still not sure. She said she trusted herself, and she's not ready to move forward. And I love it. Good for you. Um, she said she chose herself because it took her years to do that. And Nivea, that is nothing to be ashamed of, and that is a lesson that many women can walk away with, and quite frankly, a realistic one. Um, Ty holding his ball head in his hand like he's hurt. Um, I just think he's mad he can't pitch a future reality show. Is it just me or does he look familiar? Like we've seen him on ITV before. For some dumbass show, I'm sure. But I'm just saying he just, I don't know what it is. Anyway, then he starts complaining in the interview. Now remember I told y'all how classy Mac handled it? He starts playing an interview about how he felt led on and how he got turned down by the woman who needed him. And I, that made my head go... Who needed you? Not I needed her. See, that that kind of, mm-mm, bruh, mm-mm. That comment alone tells me you could not handle a healthy relationship. I never trusted him. So good for you, Nivea. Um, keep, keep, keep going, girl. So finally, Tamar and JR meet up. JR is talking about how anxious he is. No shit. All right? He says he sees them being married. Tamar is talking about how scared she is. It's a lot of fear. A lot of trauma from relationships. In this show. So Tamar said, um, on one hand, she is ready, and on the other, she is not, because she said if she was, she would not have any doubt. Um, okay, that's true. Um, she starts talking about how she has prayed for somebody to understand her and her flaws, and that everything she prayed for as a child, and then she met him, and something, something, something. Some of what she was saying was hard to understand because when Tamar starts crying, she starts whispering, so it was hard to understand. And I, I didn't feel like putting on the subtitles. It wasn't that deep for me. So then he got on one knee and asked her to marry him and said he doesn't see a life without her. And I personally am not here for it. Um, how long did they take this show, y'all? Over the course of how long did they take this show? How long ago was this taped? Like, I can't with the foolishness. She says yes, which we're all shocked by because it made it to the shade room, Okay. We knew what the answer was going to be, all right? And that's why I'm reviewing this finale because I wasn't about to watch all those episodes they ruined for us. Tamar then says, crying, 
the realest thing. She said, I have to go call my mother now. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're going to need to do that, boo-boo. Um, they give the six-month update that we already knew thanks to the shade room with the exception of Nydia. Uh, LaVon asked Evelyn to marry him after six months on her birthday. He's planning to move to L.A. in the spring. If y'all haven't been in the same city together, y'all aren't ready for marriage. I don't think so. I think there's a there's a gap there. Y'all didn't have a friendship before that. And LaVon, I really don't think this is worth not being close to your daughter for. I don't think Evelyn's worth it. I think you could do better, like I said. Nivea is still focused on herself and her family. And like I said, I think that is the most realistic ending. And based on probably the time frame for this reality show in terms of its taping. So anyway, that's it. I'll talk to y'all later. Be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see y'all later for SWV and Escape. Okay, bye.